Senator Richard Selby. You know, Senator, you were around Washington, D.C. in 93 and 94 when Democrats overreached with Bill Clinton. You were around throughout parts of uh, the past eight years when Republicans overreached. Do you think Democrats are overreaching now by saying we're going to change the rules of the Senate and do the very things we condemned George Bush for wanting to do on reconciliation? Absolutely. When you, when you, ha you come to power, Joe, as you know, you've been there, uh, and I have to, you think, gosh, we're the only party in town. We're the only people that matter. But that's not true. There's, there'll be hell to pay for any of this stuff because we know as Republicans we did some things that probably should have gone through the regular order and it didn't. And health care should certainly go through the regular order, not through a reconciliation process. Well, you, you were, in fact, were, you were a lifelong Democrat, and you were so offended by the Democrats overreaching in 93 and 94, telling them we need to moderate more, that you changed parties. I look at people like Claire McCaskill and Ben Nelson in these swing states, and I'm just thinking, this is gonna, a lot of this stuff is going to be very hard for them to explain to their voters when they're up for election. Joe, you're absolutely right. It becomes very uncomfortable. I, I remember in 93, I was the uh, senator that uttered the phrase, the tax man cometh when Clinton came to power. And uh, I, I was absolutely right. But there are a lot of people in the swing states, there are a lot of uh, uh, moderate Democrats that are going to be very, very uncomfortable with rushing through a health care policy that could be something would break the back of America. Well, and you also have, of course, it uh, looks like Harry Reid may face the same consequences that Tom Daschle faced in South Dakota, being a progressive, being a liberal in Washington, D.C., and then going home to a very moderate swing state. Uh, you think Harry Reid could be in trouble in 2010 if he keeps darting left with this president? You know, I really don't know. Uh, ultimately, the, the state battles have got to be decided on the battlefield of the respective states, and they will. They won't be decided here in Washington, D.C., as you and I both know. Right. Pat, Pat. you can. Uh, Senator. Uh, Good morning, Joe, Pat. How are you? Um, Joe, and we've been talking in the last two days, our poll, I guess, came out in the Washington Post that said Republican identification among voters is down to 21 percent, which would be below almost the Goldwater levels. I remember those days pretty well. If that is true, what would be your explanation for why the Republican Party has lost so much uh, support among the American people? Well, I, I fir first of all, I hadn't seen the poll numbers or the, the methodology, but 21%, uh, that's hard to believe. Uh, my gosh, you know, we could start an independent party and probably get up to there. <laughs> Pat might be the head of it. But uh, ne <laughs> ne nevertheless, uh, I, I know the Democrats are in their first 100 days. They've got something going for them now. But this won't last forever. The Republicans will come back. It might be step by step, <laughs> brick by brick. We have a common task and a common challenge. Why can't we see that we are all in this together?